Software engineering is one of the only industries that I've found that people love to do it during the day and also feel obsessed about doing it in the off hours. And they call those things side projects. And also many engineers are obsessed with finding the right side project to work on. And I've worked with hundreds of software engineers and I can tell you about 90% of them have bad side projects. Let me explain. So if you clicked on this video, there's a good chance that your side project or a side project that you're thinking about is probably a bad idea as well. That's okay. I'm guilty of this as well. And I want to talk about all of the bad ideas and how we can change those bad side project ideas into good ideas. And these good ideas can actually transform your efforts into finding that job and being able to level up and get that next job that you want. And let's face it, in 2024, the job market is rough. So anyone that wants to try to get an advantage, this is a good way to do it. So getting into it, when we talk about a side project that is not, has nothing to do with your day job, it kind of falls into two different categories. And it's very important to know where your side project lands between these two categories. And I'm just gonna call those two categories for business and for pleasure. When we talk about side projects that are just for pleasure, those are the ones that just kind of itch those intellectual curiosities, things that you just kind of want to learn about. The idea is that you need to know how it isn't really serving you in the job market. I'm talking about side projects that are almost all Raspberry Pi related. If you're just trying to code something that like gets your coffee started or like sends you a text message, those aren't going to be very good projects that are going to get you that next job. It's just for your own benefit to enjoy. Like you're the only one that's gonna benefit from this. Or like scripts that you can run on your machine to move a bunch of files into the right spot. We have to be honest about those side projects because those are just benefiting us and they're not really like preparing you for like that next job or trying to up level your career. And that gets us into the second category, which is for business. Now I think about the for business side projects as ones that will like you will want to put on your portfolio to prove that you know a technology or that you have been able to launch a product so that you can have a portfolio and experience to get a job or use that as leverage to show that you can get that next job and prove that you are trying to advance your career faster than you would if you just try to do this during your day job. The four business side projects are the ones I'm going to talk about today. You can do whatever you want for the four pleasure, but just keep in mind like Who's it actually serving? If it's just serving your intellectual curiosity, then just own it. That's okay. That, that's a hobby. I'm gonna talk about the side projects that really benefit you and your career. Now, when I talk about the business side projects, I'm not meaning that they have to be like a side business. It doesn't have to be a side hustle. It's just something that could turn into a business, but for the most part, it is providing value to you or someone else. More often than not, you're using this side project uh, to benefit you getting a job in the future or trying to get a promotion at the current job you're at. So there's three things I wanna talk about when I talk about these kind of side projects. The first one is just asking the dumb question of, how do I code a side project? It's very important, even if you are an experienced coder, to think about this section. The next section is just, I'm gonna give a list of a bunch of very common side project ideas. And in the third section, I'm gonna actually talk about why those ideas are bad and how we can improve them. Now, I know asking the question of like, how do I code a side project kind of sounds like a dumb question, but hear me out. Most people, when they think about coding up a side project, they only think about like just two steps, coding up the thing and you're deploying the thing. Now that seems like the only steps that you need, but a side project should expand to many more steps. So like I said, that's only two steps, coding the thing and deploying the thing. The thing is, is that there's steps around it. And I normally label these in seven different steps of how a side project or any software engineering project should take these steps. Let's start from the beginning. The step number one is to find the right idea. It's simple, but it's also hard. It, the simple idea is that you find something that will provide value for someone's problem. That could be your problem, someone else's problem. You're trying to create some code to do a thing. The second step is finding requirements for that. So you may not be the only person that knows what to do. So you want to find what will make it the minimum viable product. When you get to the MVP, that services some level of value to the user, whether that user be you or other people, it's the bare minimum to get like the 1.0 out. Only then is when we get into the two steps of coding up the thing and then deploying the thing. Now, coding up the thing and deploying the thing are very important steps that you will do over and over again, but you can't forget the next steps. After you deploy it, you have to find users. 
find users of the software. And this is where a lot of people fall short is that they may have the only user of one and that's themselves. Like you need to find someone that is willing to use this software and be able to help you out in the next step. And the next step is able to actually get feedback. Getting feedback from the users is very important so that you can get feedback and then go through the coding deploying cycle again, and that's called iterating. So when you're iterating, you're getting feedback, you're gonna code up that feedback to fix that problem, and then you're gonna deploy something new, and then you run through that cycle until you improve the software over and over again. You can't do that without users or people that are outside of just yourself. That's the problem. So many people focus on coding and deploying with themselves in a vacuum, and uh, that's it. They don't do anything else. They are the user, they're trying to get their own feedback, and that does not represent what software engineering in the real world actually does. And that's the proper cycle of software and also a proper cycle for a good side project. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, a lot for just a side project or something that you do in the off hours, but if you're the only user, you're doing the cycle anyways. You're just doing this with stuff that you enjoy and you're iterating on things that you want to improve and so on and so forth. It's just better to expand to find other users and other feedback from other people. So now I'm going to go through a list of things that I consider bad ideas. And I'll tell you why in the next section of why these are bad ideas. But let's go ahead and dive through this list. How about a to-do app, a time tracking app, expense tracking app, note taking app, VS Code extension, even making a whole new programming language, a CLI library that helps you interact with an API, a coding interview helper, a new NeoVim library, or even just a productivity tool. These are all bad ideas. And if you take a minute to look at this list of ideas, I can tell you why they're bad. So why are these bad ideas? And why is it bad to only be focusing on the developer experience or like coding for developers? And the main reason is because that this is a completely saturated market. Like all developers know the audience of developers because they are themselves. So they're kind of like, you know, feeding themselves and that entire industry, it's completely swamped with people trying to improve their own lives, essentially. It's hard to break outside of that and trying to learn from other people, but that's what software is being built for. Software isn't only built for other software engineers. You're building for every industry. That's the key part of like building a side project is expanding out to where a lot of people don't code. And there's a lot less competition about like making a good side project with people that aren't used to having software be a solution. So I mentioned that they are bad ideas, but how can we make them good? So if you look at these bad project ideas, you can make them better by simply just including people that actually want to use your idea in the first place. So if you can't find someone to do or to use your to-do app, Find someone that could maybe want to use it and try to learn to, to build for them. Ask the question of like, what would this need to do for you to enjoy it, for you to find value in it? Because if you're just building for yourself, you're gonna get into this circle cycle and you're gonna think it's a good idea, but um, the only user being you, that's, that's not very helpful. Most of software is being built of getting feedback off of other people. So you can make these into better ideas by actually like incorporating people outside of yourself. And on top of that, you can also niche down to a specific industry. So you, maybe you can do a to-do app for something specific for your aunt and uncle about how they go about their lives. You can make it very specific to a certain user and use case, and then you've got a user. If you build towards them, people aren't that unique. You're going to find other people that also enjoy that. So that's going to be a way that you can improve these ideas. So after giving you a couple of ideas of how to improve this, and it, it kind of boils down is like, the way to improve your career and how to cycle through and uh, iterate on building software is to get real users. And the only way you're going to do that is if you think outside of yourself. It's better to go into an area where there's less competition and these people that are in another industry are going to greatly appreciate your help when you're trying to find software to help build for them. This teaches you about the whole software life cycle, and this will help you elevate to a senior level, to a staff level, because when you get into those big industries that require that kind of software experience, you're constantly getting requirements from people that you aren't normally working with, whether that be the mortgage industry, insurance, defense, communications, marketing, like all that stuff is not software engineering. So you have to understand what the user needs, 
and to distill it down into coding. Coding is the easy part. And the way to level up your life and your career in software is to understand how to communicate, to learn how to get requirements, to find solutions that don't make a lot of sense, but like make it work so that these users can be excited about the software that you're writing. I also want to reiterate what I said earlier about uh, the software and developer community does not need any more tools. And to compete with a lot of people that are doing that for their livelihood is a difficult ask. There are so many people out in the white collar world that want software to help solve their daily drudgery of their job. And they are a hundred times more grateful when you're able to like solve simple problems for them. It could be easy for you, but as long as you understand the requirements and you can build something to help fix their problem, the amount of joy that you get from that is, is the reason why I'm still in this career. You're seeing how you can make someone's life a little bit easier with software. You just gotta find the right group. You can probably find the right group if you have some other hobbies that are outside of software. Maybe you can find something and build something for a community outside of software. That's a good way to find a different side project, whether that be your kickball team, whether that be a darts league that you go to every single weekend. I don't know what you guys are into. Just something that's not software, you build software for those people. And before I end this video, I just want to give out like a, a, just a handful of random ideas that could help you when you niche down into a different project that will make it a more successful one is if you think about a CMS, a customer management software for a certain industry, maybe like plumbers or electricians, like something that's specific to their needs and helps them control handling different customers as, as opposed to a customer management system that works for everyone. That's a harder thing to do. Or maybe you want to do a scheduling app for charge nurses that have to build the schedule every every two weeks for all their nurses and make sure they get all their vacation times and stuff. That's a hard problem. You can do like a client tracking app for lawyers or anyone that actually has clients or is like juggling a bunch of different things, but make it specific for a certain industry, whether that be a lawyer, a lawn maintenance company, or some cleaners, something that is built specific for them, for them to be overjoyed that you're thinking about them. They don't have to find a tool that's built for everyone and they have to just somehow break it into how they work. The idea is that you are looking at someone that has a problem and trying to solve it directly for them. You don't have to solve everyone's problems, just solve a certain person's problem. I mean, maybe you even go to your local store and they have a hard time just keeping inventory with the stuff that they have in stock. If you could solve that for them and make it so that their lives are a little bit easier when they keep track of all their stuff, then that's great. All these are hard problems that can be solved with software. And if you build it for someone, and when you have people be more excited, they're immediately users, and there's gonna be more users that you can build off of that. Having real users is the real value of like building software and side projects. As always, I hope this helps. And honestly, a lot of these ideas that I brought up earlier, and I hope that there's some creative juices flowing, that any of these could be freelancing opportunities too. If you wanted to build a project that could bring in real money, then these are all ideas that you can build off of as soon as you find the users that really want this software. If you're curious about how I've gained my first $500 freelancing, I have this video over here as well that you can check out. But also if you've made it all the way to the end of the video and found some value in this, go ahead and put a koala emoji in the comments so I can thank you directly for watching the whole video. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.